And we're looking at here in Matthew chapter number 4. We're looking at his temptation, Christ's temptation. Now, again, his temptation was not for him, but him, him being tempted, him being tested was for you and I. It was for us, not for him. He's God. Yeah, he, he's not going to... He's not going to fail the test, but but yet he need he he knows what you and I go through in this walk of life, and he knows that you and I are going to be tempted. We're going to be tested, and 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 God doesn't tempt again. God tempts no man. He does not tempt you and I into sin. He does not tempt you and I to do anything contrary to His word. That's the devil. God may test you and I, but it's not in a way that is will bring uh, 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 cause us to sin. In other words, that's Satan. And here, Satan was tempting Christ. Well, let's let's read here. Then then was Jesus led up. He said, "Of the Spirit." So we see we we know he's being led of the Spirit unto the wilderness to be tempted. Of the devil. And when he had fasted, he said, 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward. Now notice that word afterward. Circle that word. Highlight that word. Afterward, a hungered. Now it doesn't say that he was hungry during those 40 days, but he said after those 40 days, he become hungry. So notice here, he says, and when the tempter came to him, if thou be, now notice there, there, there is that question, if thou be. And a lot of times this world has that question, if thou be the Son of God. I'm glad I have settled it all. I'm glad I'm fully, now, and I'm not just persuaded, but I'm fully persuaded that he is exactly who he said he was. He is the Son of God. But here, the devil said, if thou be the Son of God, He said, he know he knew he was hungry. He said, command that these stones be made of bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Now again, say, well, how did he answer Satan? He answered him with the word. Answered him with the word. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. And again, we know that come out of Deuteronomy. He said, but every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. Then the devil taking him uh, and up, <coughs> excuse me. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle or the very highest point, the very highest place, he said, of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. Again, Satan, he's using scripture. Don't get in a battle of wits with Satan trying to use scripture. Turn him over to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, submit thyself unto God. Then he says, then resist the devil. You know, we won't be able to do anything within our own power unless we're submitted fully under God. So he says, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. He said, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him again, how did he do it? How did he, how did he uh, fight the devil? Again, he used scripture. So if, if you and I, the only hope we have scripture in the Lord Jesus Christ, in him. He said, it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him, he said, all the kingdoms of this world and the glory. Notice what he said, in the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And Jesus saith unto him, Get, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, again, using scripture, he said, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. 
Well, that's good right there, isn't it? That's, and again, not only is that for him, but that's for you and I. He said, only, he said, for thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now notice what happened. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came down and ministered, ministered unto him. If you go in the book of Luke, now he said, and the devil left him, he said, for a season. And that's the way it is. Sometimes when we're in the battle, we get a little relief every now and then, don't we? But we go back, and I want you to notice here, he says that he went up to be tempted of the devil, and afterward, he was a hunger. And we see here that very first temptation the devil tempted Jesus with was to use the wrong method to, to feed himself, to make these stones bread, and if you do that, you're going to be everybody. You're going to be able to feed everybody. But that's the wrong method. That's that's not what. That's not what thus saith the word. That, that that wasn't his will. That wasn't the Father's will. But he says, and afterward, though, now notice now, while he was fasting forty days, brother David, and he was fasting forty nights. It does not say that he was hungry then. You know why he wasn't hungry? Well, he was busy doing business with God. He was being led of the Spirit. He was fellowshipping with the Father. He said these 40 days he was fellowshipping with the Father. And I, I, and I don't, uh, the Bible doesn't say, I'm just telling you what I think. I, I believe those 40 days went by like fast. He was busy with the Father. Have you ever been busy I mean, really working on something. I mean, Brother Sammy, you ever been in your shop and you've been there for hours and you never got hungry? Why is that? Because you was busy. You had your mind on what you were doing. We've had our mind on what we were doing. Now here, what was Jesus doing? He was led by the Spirit. He was, again, I want to tell you, he was fellowshipping with the Father. Preparing for these things. Again, he was 100% God. He was 100% man. And in his humanity, he suffered. He felt the very same things, the very hurts that you and I feel, the very hunger pains that you and I feel, all these things that you and I go through in this walk of life, he felt too. During these 40 days, he said, afterward, he was hungry. And that's how Satan tried to tempt him. Well, the second temptation. What did he do? Well, he said, he said I'm, I took him up to the pinnacle of the temple. Notice that. Now, I want to ask you something. What was the temple? What happened in the temple? What was the temple for? It was to worship God, wasn't it? Yeah. It was to worship God. So he took him up to the pinnacle of the temple, and he says, cast thyself down. So what was he doing? He said, Jesus, here's what will happen. If you throw yourself down from this temple, everybody's going to see that. They're going to see the angels come down and you're going to be the most famous person in the world. He's tempted him with self, with fame. He said, well, he said, here's what he's done. He said, you do this spectacular. Hey, folks, now that would be spectacular, wouldn't it? I've seen, and most everybody's seen people jump off of something, and I've never seen anybody get caught. Oh, I, you have. I, I have seen some people come out of, of buildings, and they've had these things, and they've caught a few. Some of them's been saved, but a lot of them, they wouldn't. They stopped moving when they met the ground. Gravity. And he said, it, this would be such an event when the angels come down. He said, the fathers are, the words already said that you'll never be hurt. He said, you won't even, you won't even, folks, he won't even stump his toe. Now that's something, isn't it? I know most of all of us have stumped our toes, haven't we? And what do you do when you stump your toe, especially at night and you're trying to go through the house and, 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 and your wife has moved stuff around and you don't know where it's at. And Mr. Toe finds Mr. Leg. Not of, 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 of the table or something. 
And what do you do? You hop around for a few minutes. We're wincing in pain. But here, what, what the point is, he said, Jesus, you do this. He said, and man will see this and they'll know that you're the Son of God and they'll come and they'll follow you and they'll worship you and they'll be with you and they'll not leave you. But that's a lie. We, we looked at it and when, he, when he said make these stones bread. If he would have done that, he, he would have fed thousands. And he did do that. He fed, you remember when he fed the 5,000? That was men only. And then the Bible says that was men. That didn't count the women and the children. Some say it could have been 10. Some say it could have been 15,000. It could have been 20,000 that he fed with how many what? Two loaves and five fish. Well, that brother uh, Todd preached on that. But yet, they didn't follow him then. So we see here, Satan, Satan said that Jesus just, you're going about this the hard way. You don't have to do what you're getting ready to do. You don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to pay for all this. Let's just go an easier route. Just do something spectacular and they'll just, they'll be, They'll just follow you. Well, and Jesus answered, he said, but it is written. He says, again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He's quoting out of Deuteronomy, chapter number 6, verse number 16. Here, here's what the scripture says in Deuteronomy 6.16. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, if you got, if you got your Bibles and you want to turn, you'll notice that the Lord is capitalized L-O-R-D. That's Jehovah. That's the highest name for God. He said the Lord your God. As you tempted him in Massa. Well, what's that? Well, this is during the temptation. This was there in the wilderness when they was coming out of Egypt. He said, as you tempted him in Massa, well, what's going on there? Well, if you remember Israel, when they was coming out of uh, Egypt, what did they want? They wanted some water. They needed water. And that's what he's talking about here in the wilderness. But God, but even in the dry desert, God provided water, didn't he? What did he do? He said, Moses, strike the rock. And the water come out. Then the next time he said, Moses, speak to the rock. That's where Moses made a mistake. See, Moses is just like you and I. You know what Moses did? He, he let the children of Israel get under his skin, so to speak. And their sins. In their ways. In, the, in all the things. And you remember, and Moses got so out of the way, and, and he, he, he called them a bunch of stiff necks. You believe that? <laughs> he said, you bunch of heart. Now, I'm, I'm this, you, you're hard-headed. Instead of speaking to the rock, Moses smote the rock, but yet God being gracious and God being good, he provided them water anyway in the, because Moses, he failed to do what God told him to do. And because of that, that's why Moses didn't go into the promised land. So we see, he said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God in Deuteronomy 6.16. So what do we learn from this? In, in our temptations, and folks will have temptations, None of us is above those things. Now, when does the temptation come? Well, notice now when Jesus said he fasted 40 days, the Bible said he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And afterward, when, when Jesus was busy with God, when Jesus was occupied with God, when Jesus was, fit, was working with the Father, the temptations did not come. But when they come is when he got idle. That's what happens to you and I. When we get our minds idle, what happens? When we don't have our minds full of the things that, of the Lord, somebody wants to put things in there. 
Now, I've got a lot of room sometimes, don't you? And things bounce around, and they bounce around. And I, I, there's a lot of things I wished I could get out. You know, if you could, we was in the hospital. And uh, we was in the ICU. And I kept, they had a hand drill there, Scott. You know, one of them old hand drills. I kept looking at that hand drill, wondering why in the world they had a hand drill in the hospital room. With me. I'm thinking, why they got this in here? But I finally got enough courage up to ask. I asked the doctor, I said, why do you have this drill in here? He said, in case you pass out, we're going to drill a hole in your head. And we're going to relieve the pressure. And I thought, I'm not going to pass out. <laughs> But that's what it was. It's one of them old hand crank drills. And I'm like, no way, you're not going to use that on me. I'm staying away. <laughs> but we find here, when, when we get idle, when things are not, when, when we get our minds off of things, that's when we're going to, when we get to our weakest point, when he was hungry, that's when we're going to be tempted. And here he's being tempted with promoting himself. You know, a lot of Christians today, they're tempted with self-promotion. What's that? Well, they, they want everybody to look at them. Look at what I'm doing. Look at, what I, look at the job I'm doing. It, it's kind of like, and I, I guess this is a bad illustration, but it's kind of like dealing with a bunch of first graders and they're all wanting you to look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at what I'm doing. And folks, nothing that we can do Nothing that you and I could ever do would actually be worthy of anything given to Christ. The only thing that we can do is what he puts in us to do. And he helps us do. It's not of our own selves in here. And that's what he was being tempted with here. This thing. Everybody would just talk about that. Did you see that? Jesus jumped off that tent. And before he hits the ground, those angels swooped down and they, they carried him back up. Boy, that'd be something to see, wouldn't it? So <laughs> he said, well, what we learned, well, God's not to be tested. Not, God's not to be tempted. God, Folks, we, now I know he says, well, try me. In other words, prove me. But we're not to tempt God in no way, no form, and no fashion. You know what we're to do? We're to trust God. Yeah. We're to trust Him. We don't need to tempt Him. We're to trust Him. Uh, and again, uh, <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to tempt Him in His will or in His power. None of that. His protection. Even His promise. Sometimes we, we, we tempt Him in His promises. We, we may take a promise that's really meant or someone else, or something else, or some another neighbor, and say, well, that's ours, when it's not. A lot of these promises are to Israel that's in here. Some of these promises are to you and I. Not every promise is, is well, we can say, well, every promise, no, not necessarily. So we can take things and get them twisted and get them turned up. And we find here, so what do we test? What, what do we do here? What, when, when we trust God, how do we trust God? What are we to do? Uh, well, are we to, or, well, I, Lord, just give me a sign. I need a sign. Well, the Bible says it's a wicked generation who seeketh after a sign. We don't need a sign today. They used signs then. You know why? Because they didn't have the word. We've got the word. So what are we looking for when we trust God? Are we looking for some spectacular event to take place that couldn't have took place any other way? No. We just simply take God at his word. That's the best way to do it. Just take him at his word, what he said, and he'll do what he says he'll do. Now again, he may not do it today. He may not do it tomorrow. Folks, we may, we, we may be in heaven when we see that happen. 
But we'll see it happen. So he says, God's to be trusted. You know what else he's to be? The Father, I, I love when Jesus prayed, what did he call him? He called him Abba, Daddy. The Father, God, he's to be loved. We ought to love him just like we, or more, more than we love our earthly fathers. We ought to love him that much. He, he's, he's to be trusted. He's to be loved. And, and again, not for what he can do, but who he is. Who is he? Well, he's God eternal. He's all powerful. He, he's all these things. And he says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So we find Jesus in this temptation. He could have, he, just as in the other temptation, he could have misused his power. He, he was God. But he didn't. He could have brought the attention. He could have been the center of attention. He could, have, he could have been, everybody, all eyes on me. But he didn't do that neither. I don't believe that Jesus ever done that. Drew attention to himself. Matter of fact, in a lot of occasions, he hid himself. And he'll tell, and he would tell them, go tell no man. Now, how can you not go tell somebody what Jesus just did for you? Could I? Could, <laughs> he knew this was going to tell. But we find here, he did not bring the center of attention on himself. You know, that, that's, you and I can be tempted to do that. We can have this same temptation to be the center of attention. Years ago, I know most, of, most everybody here remember that song. Back in around the 1980s, Mac Davis sung it. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Remember that song? Yeah, most of us do. Some of us do, maybe some don't. Well, the song was just talking about how, how per folks, I, I got news for you. Yeah. I've got news. None of us are perfect. Yeah. Not one of us. None of us. What was that? Well, one day I'll, I'll, I'll be sinless. Well, you won't be on this walk of life. You might be when you die. That's when it will be sinless. Yeah. When we're with the Father. But right now, <laughs> all of us have got problems. You ever try to hear anybody blame their problems on being from a dysfunctional family? I was from a dysfunctional family. To be honest with you, there's been no functional family. We all are from a dysfunctional family. We all were born with a sin nature. But yet God and his grace, hallelujah for his grace. He made a way for you and I to, to escape that, to get away from that. And that's through his son, if thou be the son of God, and he is the son of God, and by him being the son of God, he brought you and I salvation. Isn't that wonderful? And the devil said, oh, Jesus, don't go to the cross. There's a better way. And here's what he did. Well, we'll, we'll get to that right now. But I, I first want to tell you something. When we're faced with this thing, when we're faced with temptations, when we're faced with trials, folks, trials are going to come. Heartaches are going to come. The best we'll do, we'll have a broken heart sometimes, won't we? So what are we to do in these all these temptations and everything? Well, one, we need to live with God. We need to live with God in a constant communion, fellowshipping, talking. Now, and again, when we're talking, we're, we're listening more than we're talking. That's communion with him. Then we live in God's word. Spend time in that word. <laughs> I 
I like what Paul told Timothy in rightly dividing it, not taking it out of context and all that. And realize this. People will say, well, what's the opposite of God? Well, Satan. No, Satan is not the opposite of God. <laughs> Satan is below God. He is not equal. To be opposite, to be equal. But he's not equal. You see, Satan is not omnipotent. He is not omniscient. He's not any of those. And he has limited. He, does, he is powerful. Folks, we're no match for him. Not within our own selves. The only way we'd ever be a match for him. Hey, even Michael, Michael did not, or he did not uh, 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 fool with the devil, in other words. He didn't, he said, he, he said, he said, the Lord rebuke thee. That's what we need to do. Let the Lord rebuke him. So he said, he's of limited power. So where did all this take place? Where did all this happen? He said at the temple, at the temple, at the place of worship. It happened at the place of worship. Now, what is this place here? What, what is revival? What is this building here? It's a place of worship, isn't it? It's where the body... comes to worship. We call it the church house. Why? Because it houses the church, right? Where's the church? The church is in those that Christ is residing in, right? So here's that place of worship. So what is Satan, why does Satan want to have a bullseye on the place of worship? He gets no greater joy than if he can disrupt worship. He wants to disrupt our worship. He wants to get our eyes off of him and get our eyes on each other and get our eyes on worrying about everything else but worshiping God. You know what he really wants to do? He would really like to have a strong division come into this church. That's what he wants. He'd love to have a strong division come in. And, and, and sadly to say, sometimes if we're not careful, we're opening the door and letting his foot get in. So he wants to come in and divide. Yeah, you know what else he'd love to have in this church? He'd love to have some, a little bit of good false teaching. He has some false teaching. And if we can get that and we can get them believing a lie, well, what happened was Eve. He said, if we get this false teaching, he said, just anything that would detract. Hey, folks, you know what he wants to do? He wants to, get to, he wants to detract you and I, get us off track, get us detracted from our purpose. And that's working and worshiping the Lord. So we see here. What, what is the devil's purpose? What, what does he want to do? Well, the same thing he's been trying to do before Genesis chapter number one is to defeat God. Remember what I believe is Isaiah chapter number 14, I think, where Lucifer, you remember what I, I believe he said, I will set my throne above. I will, I will, I will. And that's why he, he's been wanting to defeat God. Uh, so Jesus, don't worry about your purpose. Don't worry about why you come. There's an easier way. You don't have to do it that way. You see, he didn't have to, do, but he did for you and I. He did it for us, not for him. He did it for me. Adam, he done it for you. He done it for Tom. He done it for each and every one of them. He didn't do it for him. He done it for us. You don't have to do that. Here's what he said. He, he, Satan, now again, Satan. 
You know what he wants to do? If he can get in, he wants to ruin lives. Yeah. Not just for this time, but for eternity. If Again, you know, we, we, we talked about Sunday, I believe. He said we, he cannot keep God from answering a prayer. But he can keep us from praying. He wants to defeat. He wants to divide. He wants to keep you and I defeated. You know, that, that's a sad person, isn't it? A child of God who goes around defeated all the time. And, and the bad, bad thing about that is, it's catching. It, it's catch, it, it can go through a church just like wildfire. So he said this in John 10, 10. Here's what Jesus said. The thief... The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I've come that they might have life and that they may have life more. You see, not just life, he said, but more abundantly. Folks, not only can we have a good life here, but we, we sung about it. Heaven. Can you imagine how good that's going to be? I can't imagine not having any problems, no worries, no heartaches. I can't imagine not, when the phone rings, you, you look at the phone and you look at the, you know, I, I know none of y'all do that. You look at the number and you know, the, you know the number and you think, reckon what they want. Right? No more bad news, Brother Scott. He won't have to worry about me calling him to come pull me out of the ditch no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the devil wants to do these things. But this last one, we've got a few minutes. I think we might be able to just get done with it. This last one, when he took him up on the mountain, he said, he, I showed him the kingdoms of this world. And he said, if thou just bow down and worship me, Jesus, there's a better way. He said, here's what I'm going to tempt you with. And I, folks, it's the same thing, especially today. We're tempted with compromise. Just compromise. A little. Don't, folks, you're just too rigid. You, folks, what do you mean you got to stand on the word of God? Hey, you need to be able to bend just a little bit. You see, that's what he wanted Jesus to do. He said, just, just look. He said, look what I'll give you. Look at the glory of all this that I can give you. Folks, he already owned it all. Yeah. He already owned it all. And he said, Jesus here, he said, just bow down and worship me. Don't go to that cross. He said, that cross is going to be painful. That cross is going to be heavy. That cross is going to be cruel. Look, Jesus, they're going to abuse you. They're going to whip you. They're going to pull all your beard out. Jesus, you're just going to be abused. So let's take the easy way. I'll go ahead and set you up right. I'll go ahead and fix you up right now. I'll go ahead and fix you up right now. And all you've got to do is bow down and worship me. Just compromise just a little bit. Just a little bit. And when we compromise just a little bit, we've just opened the door wide open for Satan to come in. And he says here, notice what he said here. He says, and he said to him all these things, verse number nine, I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And Jesus saith unto, and then saith Jesus unto him, get thee then. He said, get away. Folks, you know what? When these things, when compromise and, or maybe all these uh, fame and, and doing things are wrong and all these temptations come for you and I, you know, we, we all just say, get away. Just get away. We ought to be busy. We ought to have our minds on the Lord. Hey, folks, we ought to be fully persuaded. 
Then he says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Here we know in the Ten Commandments, right? The Ten Commandments, who are we to worship? The Lord, our, the, the Lord our God. Again, we're going back to Deuteronomy and the Ten Commandments. He said, hey, we're not to work. Folks, we're worshiping way too many things today. When, I, when, I, when I'm saying, well, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just talking in general here. I'm talking about not just anybody in particular, but everybody. Uh, but everybody. Folks, we're worshiping all kinds of wrong things. Basketball players, football players, boats, cars, all this other stuff. All these things that gets in between us and worship, folks, is a problem. And he says, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only. He said, and in him only thou shalt serve. You know, we ought to be worshiping. We ought to be, we're serving way too many things. Now, I understand, folks, we've got bills to pay. Everybody's got bills to pay. And we've got to work. I understand that. Uh, I mean, everybody has to. I'm, anybody here not like to eat? Anybody here about to go to the grocery store and get everything just on our good looks? It doesn't work too good, does it? What do you got to have? You got to have money. How do you get money? You got to work. I understand that. But there's a point when we ought to quit work to worship. Yeah. When we ought to make time. Folks, worship is a choice. Making time to worship. And again, I, folks, I know I'm preaching to the choir. You're here. And I understand that. But I, if we could just get in our heads that if, if, if it's a choice that I make. It's a choice of whether you make. Well, no, it ain't a choice. I've got to go to work because I've got a payment I've got to make, right? Well, folks, Jesus paid it all for you and I. Is he not worthy? Is he not worthy of all these things? And, he, and the devil just wants us to compromise just a little bit. There's a lot of churches. You know, you can fill a church house up with compromise. You sure can. Well, we just... We'll just start doing a lot of things that all the other churches are doing. And, and I, we can fill her up. But I kind of like Jeremiah. I mean, I'm not saying we... <laughs> we need to stick with some old stuff, don't we? Yeah. We need to stick with some old stuff. Stick with God. Serve Him. Worship Him. Don't compromise... <laughs> Our schools, again, I'm not going to pick on the schools, but our children in school, we'll just put it that way, they're faced with so much compromise today. We're all faced with it, aren't we? You know what we need to do? Do what Jesus did here. Use the word. Use not, not what we think again. Not what, well, not what we believe. But what thus saith the word of God? He said, it is written. He said, get thee thence, get away, Satan, for it's written. He said, just use the word. I know that sounds simple. But I think that's really why Paul told Timothy to study. To show thyself approved. I think that's why the book of Psalms said, to hide the word of God in our heart, that we may not sin against thee. You know, when you've got the Word, we've got all we need. Amen. I'm glad of that, aren't you? Yes. And tonight, I tell you, just, just for a moment, I'd like to end in altar of prayer for Brother Ray.